Okay, I'm back. So, the Friday before the Feast of Atonement, I um, sat down in the front of my house and I, with the understanding of what Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 tells us that we do not deal with the flesh, but we deal with the principalities from above. And I had studied out and I had researched some really great deliverance teachers that are also Torah observant, that also um, follow his ways which I could post um, if anybody wants uh, to know who it is that I, I, I searched out and who I learned from. I also went to an amazing, amazing counselor and deliverance minister here where I, where I live, they, um, they're a couple, they do not necessarily follow the Torah per se, but they do believe that faith is an action word and they do believe that you must be in a place of repentance. So I had gone to a few, um, sessions, classes with them, and they had given me a curriculum that I was really, and still am learning about, and they gave me this outline that explains how to have deliverance, okay, you have to be at a place that you have no unforgiveness in your heart. So, um, they showed me a, in scripture, in Matthew 18, the parable that Yeshua uses where if you have unforgiveness, the Father himself sends tormentors to you, which that was like, that just blew my mind because I could not it was very, very difficult to wrap my head around the fact that the father, which I don't understand why he, he did it, he did it with Job, um, that Abba would allow things to happen, which I actually, now I see it, which I do it with my own kids. He allows things to happen to us to get us to a place of one, repentance, and then of course, understanding and so uh, Feast of Atonement in front of my my house with this piece of paper outline uh, that I had I sat down and I drew a line on the sand and this outline which basically explains to you how to process having unforgiveness for someone and and it's a step-by-step -step, um almost like protocol and then it's a prayer that you that you pray at the end and you, you do it after you make a list of who you have unforgiveness for which i went around thinking i don't have unforgiveness for anyone but yes i did and in fact through that unforgiveness I understood that there were literal demons and literal spirits attached to me. And in particular, the spirit of Jezebel. Very, very manipulative and um, haughty and proudful and not really willing to submit to anything and wanting to do it on my own and wanting to put my husband under that bondage. 
And so, um, cause again, through all these years, I have read every book I have, I, I mean, I had the understanding and I had the knowledge, but yet I was still under this bondage that I just could not understand. And I started truly going back to Genesis, Exodus, where we are told that there are generational iniquities. There are generational curses that are handed down generation to generation. And so I saw all these things playing out in my family with my daughter in particular. And I was seeing all of these generational iniquities and generational curses literally playing out in my eight-year-old daughter's life and I said no not to mention that my marriage was in a very very dark place um, my husband and I were working things out because divorce is not an option for us but we were basically roommates and we were just, you know, living in limbo and living just in a, in a place of a lot of resentment for each other. And I know and I knew that 1 Peter chapter 3 tells us that through our example, Okay, and through our submission, our husbands are, are sanctified. And through our example and for, through what we do, they come around because the Holy Spirit can work in them when we get out of the way. And so I, I sat in front of my home, my house in the front of my porch I had dropped off my my son at my sister-in-law's and I uh, was by myself and I said okay this is it I'm gonna do this because I know that the word says that if I have unforgiveness in my heart and I do not have repentance I cannot be free and during the Feast of Atonement I wanted teshuva, I wanted freedom, I wanted peace, I wanted to be done with the same, I felt like a hamster in a wheel, turning and turning for 30 years, the same thing, 40 years, the same thing, going around that mountain and I was done. Not to mention that I understood that I, you guys, us women, are the prayer warriors of our family we are the prayer covering of our family yes our husbands are the spiritual leaders they should be but we are those warriors on the wall and so I drew my sword and I said that's it Satan no more and I went through my list at the mo at that time the most urgent person that I had to work through and work on and and the, and the biggest stone around my neck at the time was my husband I had a lot of unforgiveness for him I had a lot of resentment for a lot of reasons 2015 was a very horrible year and so I went through this outline and I read this prayer and I started breathing and I felt literally like a panic attack was coming over me I literally felt like if somebody something was choking me and I just kept praying and I kept praying and I felt the Holy Spirit come and just wash me with peace. And I knew that at that moment, 
I was a new creature. I was a new creation. And no longer was I under the bondage of the Jezebel spirit. And no longer was I under the iniquity of my mother and my grandmother and my father and his grandmother and his family iniquity that I no longer, no longer was in bondage. I was in freedom. And so I understood at that moment truly what the washing of the blood of Yeshua truly is all about and how my life is the oil to the lamp and I am a wise virgin that I seek my Lord and I walk out his ways with humbleness and he brought shalom to my life through the Feast of Atonement and understanding that I do want white linens and I know that I want to fill my lamp with oil for my Messiah for my bridegroom I want to be white I want to be beautiful and there is nothing that I could do to do that Accept, listen, learn, and follow my Father's ways. And I do not say this in condemnation. I do not say this in a place of proudfulness, self-righteousness. My, my deeds are filthy, filthy rags. For 30 years, I tried doing it on my own. And it was a failure it was filthy rags I was I was dying I was dying I was being devoured by Hasatan and his minions and so so many people have asked me am I Jewish now so many people have asked me like oh my gosh you are just going back to bondage and all i can say and all i can plea to you guys is just understand that his ways are freedom his ways are beautiful his ways are a road map a road map to freedom that yeshua jesus our messiah is the perfect example and if I am to emanate who he is I need to be freed from my bondage and so I am truly made new through the blood of Christ and through the gospel and through what he tells me I repent and through that repentance and through the understanding of my father's ways I have come to a place that my cup is full my cup is full guys and I truly hope this helps you okay I love you all. Like I said, I don't know who this is for. And I'm not going to allow the enemy to fill my head with nobody cares. Because you know what? I know that my father in heaven, our Abba, our Messiah, our King cares. And this is my testimony. Shalom.